Hello and welcome to sleephypnosisweekly.com This is Sleep Hypnosis Weekly with Jason Newland. That's me. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. So, um, the reason being for that is this recording aimed specifically to cause tiredness uh, may may cause tiredness because that's such a ridiculous sentence I kind of do the old uh, only listen when you can safely close your eyes to try and cover every single scenario so Last week, I started um, making these on a Friday. Started to because this podcast has been so popular, and I made the first eight, I think, or seven or eight. No, it was I don't know. Seven was it? Recordings um, a couple of years back. And because people keep coming back and listening to them, I thought, or because you keep coming back and listening, I thought what I would do is extend it. Because originally it was a, a, you know, a weekly course for seven weeks or whatever it was. And so I did one last week. I've been thinking about doing it for a couple of months and I thought, yeah. And so I decided to do one every Friday, a new recording every Friday. Officially, it's Saturday where I am, but it's still Friday in other parts of the world. So I'm okay with this. It's a little bit late, but I'm sure you'll forgive me. Just to let you know that I also do recordings regular for sleep uh, one's called Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnos- Hypnosis uh, the website for that is deepsleepwhisper.com and the other one is the podcast is Let Me Bore You to Sleep which is uh, basically me just talking about nothing for an hour and I try to do them fairly regularly like daily or every other day my aim is to do them daily and that website is letmeboreyoutosleep.com. All my podcasts are available on my Spreaker um, channel. There's about 35 podcasts there now, I think. And also available all across the internet on lots of different podcast hosts like iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn iHeartRadio Podbean this Spreaker of course there's lots of different ones alright I'll get on with this now and just to let you know if there was an advert at the beginning of this recording um, that's the only adverts you're going to hear it'll only ever be at the very beginning and there won't be any adverts during or afterwards either so just to let you know that it's, unless you've got it on repeat, I suppose, maybe, I don't know, but just generally right just at the beginning. And the idea is to try and to help me pay for this free service. So here we go. So it's Friday the, I think it was the 5th of May. Or the 3rd of May. I don't know. It was May anyway. It is May 2019. And I thought it's quite a nice idea just to get us into focus with how we feel. 
So for me, there's two reasons for this podcast. I'm sure there's many more than two, but there's the obvious, it's relaxing. You know, obvious as in, hopefully, it's relaxing. But regarding the sleeping situation, you can listen to it whilst you're going to sleep. So you can be in bed. Ideally, if you're listening to it on your phone, which I think 85% of the people do nowadays, um, then what I would suggest, if you're listening to it on a podcast, whatever your favourite podcast host is, or on the website, turn the screen off, you know, so that it goes to dark. So it doesn't, um, you know, just in case, because in a dark room, uh, a phone can be quite bright, can't it, when it's on. Another thing you could do if, I would say is, well, there's a few things. You could stick the phone on silent or... Uh, you know, do not disturb so that you don't have any phone calls. Because I personally generally don't have my phone in my bedroom. I have it because I don't want to be disturbed by it. Because even when I have the phone on silent, the screen still lights up. Unless I've got to set the alarm, you know, for the morning to wake me up. Which I did today and yesterday. So there's lots of things, and these, these recordings aren't just about me talking. Um, and you know, and you just laying there and being asleep straight away. I'm also going to be including some ideas as well. And these aren't really my ideas. These are just some things that I've come across. So um, they could go back hundreds of years. I don't know. But there's a few ideas about what perhaps you could do in order to help your sleeping. And I think that for me personally, I would start where you are. Because you may already be doing some of those things and they may not be useful. For example, having a bath before going to bed. That could be really good for a lot of people. Yeah, it could be really um, calming. But some others, other people, it might be a bit too stimulating. You know? Um having milk, like warm milk in. I've got a friend who drinks coffee before he goes to bed with warm milk. And he says it helps him sleep. I wouldn't drink coffee before going to bed. I would never recommend that. And no sleep book would ever recommend, I don't think, drinking really drinking caffeine, any kind of caffeine drink directly before going to sleep or to bed. But for some people it can work. You know, it's, uh, not everybody is a Horlicks person. I do love the smell of Horlicks. It's a beautiful smell. That's just me. It's, I think it's, this, it's got cinnamon in, I think. So it's about finding what is good for you and what works for you. I want to say what's good for you. Ideally, do something that's not unhealthy. Because, you know, if you eat like a big pie and chips and a bowl of ice cream and that sends you to sleep, If you do that every night before you go to bed, you're going to potentially have problems later on. I've just found out that I've got really, really bad cholesterol, so I have to change my whole diet. And it's it's about 
not always doing what works if what works is unhealthy. It's just finding what works for you. There's lots of different possibilities. And you might be doing everything exactly how you need it. And it's just the extra bit of me just talking to you and helping you to wind down and helping your your mind to slow down and to realize that actually when you're in bed you know you can limit the amount of things that you do in bed so you know it could be the only things you do in bed is sleep and read for example I realize I'm missing out a big thing but you possibly so you could say well uh, it's sleeping making love and reading it could be other things you know watching television in the evening or I don't know whatever it could be when I was a kid I used to like playing with toys and like soldiers and uh, kind of you know I used to like doing that when I was in bed especially like first thing in the morning but each to their own I mean, if you like to play with Lego or if you like to make you know even draw whatever it is but if you specify what you do in bed to the things that you do it doesn't mean you can't do anything else but you say well this is what I do I sleep the bed is for sleeping and maybe a couple of other things that you may do and that's what the bedroom's for and that's what you associate the bed and the bedroom for So maybe sitting in bed watching television. Maybe that's not the way to lead to sleeping. Because how does your brain know? If you're still in the same room. Just by turning your television off. That's now time to sleep. Maybe turn the television off itself is a trigger enough for you to know it's time to sleep or maybe watching a television is tiring your eyes you may fall asleep while the television is on I've done that enough times there's also You may live just in one room, which I I have done for 30 years. I don't now, but I did for a long time. I'd I'd live just in one room, be a bed, table, wardrobe and a television. And that would be it. And I'd be at a shared kitchen, shared bathroom, whatever. So a lot of what I do, some rooms are so small that I would be eating on my bed. I'd be reading on my bed. I'd be watching television on my bed. If I had a table, I'd eat at the table, as I do now. If I'm eating a cooked meal, I'll always sit at the table, just because I haven't had a table for so many years. So to have a table, it's it's nice. But each to their own. But I think sometimes I might sound a little bit finicky or a little bit... um, there's different words for it but to attribute different things for different purposes for me the table is somewhere that I work at on my laptop if I'm going to write something or if I'm going to eat if I'm going to watch television I sit on my big black squeaky chair and I watch television or watch a movie or something like that just the same way as the bathroom it's where I have a bath or I go to the toilet or clean my teeth or you know shave my beard or trim my beard I don't spend quality time in the bathroom although sometimes I have some satisfying times you know if I, if I need a toilet or whatever it's 
quite a relief. Or maybe have a bit of a long soap in the bath or whatever. Soap, soak. One of them. But that's all I use it for. The kitchen. The preparing food. And that's it. I don't use the kitchen for anything else. So, and even those of us that have a family and, you know, maybe the, the kitchen is a social area, a place where people meet up. It's still predominantly a kitchen. A toilet or a bathroom is, that's what it's for. So maybe the bedroom can be that. And even though in our minds maybe we think it is, but then you think sleeping. That's what the bedroom is for. It's called a bedroom because it's got a bed in it and a bed was invented for sleeping in. Of course you can do other things in it. But it's predominantly to sleep. Eight hours a night or whatever. Eight hours a day. Every day of your life. For example. That's what the bed's there for. And even if you do other things. 99% of the time or 90% of the time. It's going to be sleeping. Unless you're there all day long in the bed. Then yeah, maybe not. So. It's starting to think a little bit differently. Because that's when your brain starts to associate the process of shutting down at night or whatever time you go to bed. I'm aware that millions of people work during the day. Millions of people work during the night. So people sleep at different times. So whatever the time is you go to sleep... Or you, you're due to go to bed. Because think about it. In our minds, we know what time. We kind of plan the time we're going to go to bed. If you're working, you have to be at work at 9 o'clock in the morning. You know there's an hour journey to get to work. And you know it's going to take an hour really to get ready for work. You know, as far as maybe having a a non-rushed breakfast and, you know, a bath or a shower, a shave or poo or whatever you need to do. You know, that's some, maybe getting the children ready for school or looking after someone else that's in your, ha- how, you know, your home. So we have a, an idea in our head what time we need to get up in the morning. So therefore we know roughly what time we need to go to bed. But it seems to be, I think, in our brains, a lot more focus on getting up than there is on going to bed. And that might be because of all the things that follow getting up. Because the process of going to bed is fairly short one hopefully if you're lucky enough you know it might involve putting kids to sl- to sleep in their beds and you know but generally it's well for me and we're all different I know but I, for me it's going into the bathroom cleaning my teeth going to the toilet and turning some of the lights off you know most of the lights off in the flat taking my socks off which is one of the highlights of my day wiggling my toes around and then just laying down on my bed and enjoying the the, the support you know I lay on my back I don't sleep on my back but I lay on my back sometimes just for a few seconds sometimes for a few minutes just to enjoy the support sometimes my hip creaks and sometimes it clicks as my spine stretches and it 
it's a very kind of short process. But I don't plan, and maybe that's the thing. It's there's nothing planned after that. I don't plan to go to sleep. It's and um, well, I do, but I think it's one of those things that we just leave to chance. So you don't leave it to chance what time the bus is going to turn up or what time the train is going to turn up or when you leave for the airport when you go on holiday. You don't sort of... Um, you know, if you've got to get up at five o'clock in the morning to, you know, because you've got an early start to get to your, to the airport because you've got a family holiday and the, the flight is at maybe 11 o'clock... You don't just leave it to chance that you'll wake up on time. You set the alarm. So it's a case, I think, maybe, and this is just an idea. And I know that by laying down, closing your eyes and listening to me, you may well be fast asleep by now anyway. And that's fine, because I'm speaking softly, and it can be, my voice can be a trigger for you to just naturally relax and fall asleep. And the more you listen to me, it's, this isn't even a like hypnotic suggestion. It would be if I could pre- present it to you, to you in a hypnotic way. You know, the more you listen to me, the more relaxed and the sleepier you get. But it's true anyway, without me even saying it. It's like watching a comedy show in a sense of, you know, with like the catchphrases. Let's say The Office, for example, um, or Friends, or I really should get up to date, shouldn't I, with the local comedies but whatever the comedy show is where you are where you are you know different different countries have their own popular shows don't they you can't you expect it to be funny you expect it to be funny if you go and watch a movie like at the moment the Marvel Endgame is the big movie on um, people going to see that expect it to be action packed and they expect it to be you know brilliant they expect to love the film nobody's going to well firstly who's going to pay £12 or however much it is to go and sit in a room full of strangers to a darkened room full of strangers to do something that they don't expect to be nice you know it's an expectation it's so powerful see I'll be honest with you when I wake up when I go to bed I expect to wake up tired because I have done every day of my life pretty much apart from occasionally when I wake up and I'm like ooh, fully awake and it's a cliche people say I'm not a morning person I'm not an evening person but I've never my whole life been a morning person it hasn't stopped me doing what I needed to do and I like being awake at night. That's just me. But you know, I've had jobs where I had to get up at five o'clock in the morning. And I've done it. Because I know that as soon as you get up, well, as soon as I get up, as soon as I've had a shower or a bath, or had something to eat, 
cup of coffee, cup of tea, whatever it is, I'm awake. And as soon as I go outside to go to work, you know, it's, I live in England, so 70, 80% of the time throughout the year, 80% is, let's say they use the word refreshing. It's a refreshing temperature. So apart from a couple of months a year when it may be really warm, the rest of the year, if you get up early in the morning, it's fairly cool or much colder. So then I'm not tired anymore. So I had to plan a way to work with that part of me in the morning by see I don't it's not that I expect so I just go by what is and uh, I plan what happens next after I wake up feeling sorry for myself having you know if the alarm goes off oh I've got to get up but the fact is I don't have to do anything I choose to get up out of bed because I wanted to keep my job and to pay my wages it might be as simple as I just wanted to go to work and you know spend a bit of time with some people that I liked So I found ways to combat that temporary feeling by putting the phone the other side of the room. So when it rings, I have to get out of bed to turn it off. It's a little trick. And during the winter, you know, I have to go in and turn the heating on because it's cold. Which means, yeah, you know, I need to do something to keep warm. Which a cup of tea or a cup of coffee is quite good for that. So I'm up. So planning for sleeping, planning on what happens next, is useful. But perhaps it's not done enough when it comes to going to sleep. Because just leaving it to chance. Maybe we can do more than that. Maybe we can do something a bit more useful than just leaving it to chance. I mean, you think about even things that are completely random and at chance and we've got no control over, we still try to have control over it. Things that are complete chance, like a lottery ticket. How many people listening to this buy lottery tickets regularly and they put in a specific set of numbers, maybe correlating to the births of children uh, or to some special occasions in their life or parents' life or children's life something that means something so we don't leave to chance something that is complete chance so why should we leave it to chance something that doesn't have to be chance it can be something that can be changed can be not manipulated but enhanced with that expectation see because of my calories intake and stuff my cholesterol 
levels, I'm going to have to stop eating fast food or anything like that. But I know if whenever I know that if I drink a can of Coke, I'm going to love the taste. Always have done, all my life. Well, since I was a kid. Surprised I've got any teeth left, to be honest, but hey, I'm going to be. There's no more Coca Cola for me after Monday. Six months of intense dietary and exercise. It's bank holiday Monday, so I'm giving myself a little break first. It's not really a break if you're continuously doing what you're doing, is it? But so this expectation is that you expect something. And a lot of the time is what we expect happens with the little things, with the, the regular general things. Like you drink a can of Coke, you expect it to taste a certain way, and it does. I think some of the other brands have had trouble with that because they changed, they tried to change the taste, and people don't, want it changed they just want it to stay the same something nice with it's something nice to have something that stays the same in an ever changing world you know I quite like visiting my childhood town that I grew up in from the age of 7 to 18 because it's, apart from the town centre with the different shops changing, it stayed the same. You know, there's, of course there's a few changes here and there, but it's pretty much stayed the same for a long, long time. And I like that. Because things are changing and they're supposed to change it's natural because anyone that moans about changes they don't moan when they feel ill and they start to get better because you know when they're feeling ill they want change they want change to happen so change is a good thing nothing stays the same it's also not a pleasant thing sometimes obviously So expectation of laying down on your bed. Of course, I don't necessarily do it the way I do it. I don't mean laying down. and I don't do like a big dive. I don't, you know, climb up a ladder and jump onto the bed from the top of the ladder. But I don't mean getting into bed differently. Although we all might do that as well. But... With my bed, you could only get in, gone to the bed from the right-hand side. Otherwise, you'd have to drill through the wall because it's against the wall the other side. I mean, literally, if I got out of bed the wrong side, I would be covered in plaster dust from the wall that I, like, walked through. And the idea that once you're in bed, because, mate, that's the thing, is the expectation goes as far with some people as just getting into bed then the expectation may be I'm going to be lying and tossing and turning and and I'm going to not be able to sleep and I won't be able to do this and I'm going to be thinking about this and so we perhaps get what we expect to get we expect what we expect just like alcohol I went to a party and I wasn't really, I'd had alcohol during my childhood, you know, like Sunday lunches and and then when I got to about 16 I started drinking 
a little bit more, like, you know, going to the pubs and, and I think I was 16, so I'd, I'd had my share of alcohol, but not huge amounts, but I knew, I, you know, I knew what it was like to get drunk and to feel good and whatever came with it. I went to a party with my boss and I was drinking, we were all drinking and it was the same feeling, it was just really good. And, you know, I was acting silly like I normally do when I'm drinking. And about three hours in, they were all like crowded around talking and like, what's that? And they said, look at this. And he showed me, he showed me a bottle and it was a non-alcoholic lager. So non-alcohol lager is what he'd been giving me all night. He'd been giving me glasses of alcohol, which I thought was lager, expecting it to be lager. And I was acting as if it was real alcohol. And it, my physiology changed, my brain, because that's what I expected. Apart from the embarrassment, to be fair, I was very embarrassed. I was angry as well at the time, but it's quite a horrible trick to play on someone, especially if it's only one person as other people, you know. So, uh, but anyway, the, the point is, my expectation got me drunk. I expected the alcohol to be good, and that's what did it. The same as people have had the same thing with drugs. They've been given something that isn't even drugs. And they've gone on a trip or they've been got high. Because that's what they expected it to be. Expectation is amazing. Powerful, powerful. So it's about changing it. So I would never trust a drink that was handed to me from that person again. I wouldn't trust that it was alcoholic. And chances are, if it was alcoholic, I possibly wouldn't get drunk. Because I'd expect it to be non-alcoholic. It worked the other way as well. These tests have been done with pain someone thinking about something being really really cold and really really cold and or really really warm and the hands being really warm and they can have the hand in freezing cold water for much longer periods of time because they're feeling warmth even though it's not because they're ex you know they're expecting that they're kind of convinced that that's what's happening So if you expect to lay down on your bed, roll over, or whatever you do, you know, I roll over onto my left side and I kind of cuddled the, the quilt a bit, which is a pretty bit strange. I'll tell you what's even stranger, sometimes I'll forget where I am. And I've got Andre, my, my boy, he's a ferret, but he, during the day, if I'm asleep during the day and he's around, he'll climb on me and I'll like cuddle him and stuff. Sometimes in the night time, I'll be cuddling him, but he's not there. He's just a bit of the quilt and I'm like <laughs> stroking the bit of the quilt that I think's him. So that's a bit strange, but I'm not quite sure why I shared that with you. So when you lay down on the bed, what do you expect to happen next? When you're sitting in your chair watching television in the living room, or whatever you're doing, watch on the internet, or watching, maybe listening to the radio, whatever, reading a book, 
and you think about going into the bathroom, cleaning the teeth, taking your dentures out, going to the toilet, whatever your process is that leads you to walk into your bedroom and take your slippers off. Maybe you take all your clothes off. Maybe you put clothes on. Maybe, who knows, you might put a, one of the old-fashioned, those big long hats that people used to wear in Dickens' times to go to sleep. So when you think of that process, what happens next? What are you expecting to happen next? Because... I know that when I put the toothpaste on the toothbrush and I put some water on top of the toothbrush, you know, as well, I know that when I put that into my mouth, it's going to be very minty. I expect it to be minty. So I know what's going to happen next. So what is going to happen next when you lay down your bed and you get into your sleeping position? It's called a sleeping position for a reason. So get into your sleep and it's not called a wide awake for no reason. Wish I could get to sleep. My brain keeps thinking about things. Position. It's called a sleeping position. So... What happens next? What do you expect to happen next? Not what would you like to happen next, although that is hugely important. But what do you expect to happen next? Because that's the most likely thing to happen. Which means it needs changing if it's not useful to you you can start to fantasize guess what hypnosis is hypnosis is fantasy it's fantasizing it's creativity visualization imagining whatever words you want to use it doesn't have to be visualization in the sense of you can see the bed, you can see yourself walk into the bed, you can see, you know feel your your bum hitting the the bed as you sit down, and you can feel your feet on the floor as you kick your slippers away from your feet, and then you turn around and you can see the quilt, and it can be that detailed if you want it to be. Or it can be a feeling. Because you don't need a feeling associated with the build-up. Other than the feeling of expectation of what to expect. The more you expect it, the more it's going to happen. And to expect to just drift off to sleep knowing something's very important to know that you can't force sleep you can't force yourself to feel relaxed just like you can't force someone to fall in love with you and you can't force yourself to like food that perhaps you don't like you know some food I don't like eating I've watched movies that I have not enjoyed it's just can't force yourself to like something or to do something. So it has to come naturally. You can start to become interested in the idea of actually laying down in your bed. giving yourself a hard time because you're not asleep yet
this is where it's time to start thinking. It's, this is something that I've said before in other recordings. And it's a question. Uh, would you say that to a small child? So the question is, the things that you're saying to yourself when you lie in your bed and maybe the sleep hasn't come as quickly as you'd like it to be. You know, and you're still lying there. Maybe you're on your bed or still awake after however long. Maybe you start calling yourself names and criticizing yourself. Would you say that to a small child? Hopefully the answer would be no. But imagine if you did. How would it help? I think the answer is it wouldn't help. reminds me when I was a kid and I'd be sharing a bed with my brother or sharing a bedroom with my brothers guaranteed it'd be in a different bed or you know the other side of the room sometimes it'd be all three of us sometimes it'd just be two of us in a room guaranteed like at least a couple of times a week I'd hear Jason Jason and I'm like oh what you asleep yet just it was like a little game you know you wouldn't do that to someone well maybe as a child to another brother or something perhaps you would but and it's quite funny to be fair I think I've probably done it as an adult as well but not really when they're asleep just sometimes I've been in a bed with someone and they've gone very quiet I kind of wanted to make sure that they were still awake. Very conscientious about laws. But the thing is, with expectations regarding... Because you know what? When you start focusing on it, When you start focusing on what happens when you're actually lying in your bed and what you expect to happen when you're lying in your bed, when you start focusing on that expectation, it changes. Because you know that that part that has been maybe you felt it's been keeping you awake and that part of you where your brain's been sort of going on and on and it's kind of just like a bit too active I mean firstly it's important to I think I would say recognise and appreciate that you've got an active brain it's a very good thing it's just at the wrong time you know it's it's like farting at a wedding in a wedding ceremony farting's great it gets rid of the gas if you didn't get rid of the gas at the very least you'd be in a lot of discomfort so we need if you know people was it the it's a big thing about the environment at the moment saying that we need to cut down on the cattle we have because of the the gas that the cattle produce erodes the ozone layer but if the cow didn't let that out there would just be lots of exploding cows all around the world you'd just be hearing big bangs continuously so having an active mind we like to say overactive don't we as if we're like, we have to put ourselves down. What, I don't know, 
like always overactive. Like we have to be negative. There's that part of the human being that seems to embrace negativity when it's not needed. Because actually having an active brain is an absolutely beautiful thing. It means that your brain is working. It means that you can think. And that you can think about different things. And that you can... It means that you're creative. It's just not useful at certain times. Maybe, if it's just a maybe, and these are just ideas, perhaps, perhaps, that's the only time when you're lying down, maybe that's the only time your brain gets an opportunity to think things through. And it takes that opportunity against your will really you don't want that to happen but it's doing it because it has to do it and the only reason it has to do it is because it's not given the chance or the time to do it any other time so maybe it's just an idea maybe you could spend half an hour a day when you're awake giving your mind the time maybe an hour a day however long it takes giving your mind the time to maybe process to think to work out stuff to plan whatever it may be it may involve writing a diary or just planning things on a piece of paper or in a book it may involve talking things through with somebody. You could even do what I'm doing here. You could just record yourself. And then just get rid of it. Or keep it. Or put it into a, a podcast. Whatever it is. you know. But the point is you've managed to give your mind that space that it may need so it may not be that your brain is against you in fact I guarantee your brain is not against you or trying to cause you problems by being stimulated at the wrong times and getting in the way of you enjoying a good night's rest or a good day's rest sleep but maybe by giving yourself a bit of space maybe 20 minutes a day maybe 10 minutes whatever it takes to consciously say okay no television no human people, no, nothing else, just this. I'm going to give myself some time. And that could be maybe in a meditative meditation. Because sometimes I find that with meditation, there's different types. I quite like the meditation where I just sit here and I let my mind do what it wants to do. Don't try and control it. Don't try and do anything. I just let it just... I let the thoughts just come. And I don't respond to the thoughts. I just let them come and go. And even if it involves working out what I'm going to do next week or what I should have done last year or... You know, the things that maybe... are relevant to some point may be very relevant maybe not so much like the past but still things that are perhaps been on your mind so if you allow yourself to feel physically relaxed and if that's the only time that you're that 
some of that stuff comes into your mind, then allow yourself to feel relaxed for a period of time when you're awake so that thing, that those thoughts can manifest and just do what they need to do. And then when you think about going to sleep, going to bed, you expect to just drift off. You don't demand it. You just expect it. You can't force it. You could just expect it. Expect to fall asleep. Expect to wake up feeling good. Expect to fall asleep. Just in the same way as you can expect to lay down on your bed and feel relaxed instantly because it's a relaxing surface and if it isn't get yourself a new bed and some may say oh, I can't afford to get a new bed and I had this conversation about joining the gym and someone said to me can you afford to join a gym I said can I afford not to you know I can't afford not to join the gym and if having a bed then I've slept in a few rubbish beds over the years you know some thought of balancing on like three springs so you can't afford not to get a different bed. One that's comfortable, one support that supports your body. But it's comfortable during the night. Something that you're happy to fall asleep on. Something that you expect to fall asleep on. And if you're still awake, I'd say thank you for listening. Chances are you may have fallen asleep. So I won't do any kind of count back or anything like that. And if you are still awake, what I was saying earlier is some people listen to this whilst going to sleep. Others will listen to this in order to help them to go to sleep when they go to bed in the same way as someone might um, listen to a stop nail biting kind of session or you know losing weight and I would say that if you do like this recording or if, if there's a specific recording that you like and you really kind of feel for what's being said then maybe listen to it a few times if if you want to of course but whether you listen to it once or a hundred times you can gain the benefit of the words because they have sunk in sometimes it only takes one sentence change your life which is why I quite like quite like reading self help books or listening to audios because every now and then something comes up and it's just like wow I mean the other day is um, I was feeling sorry for myself for some reason and I couldn't be bothered to do anything. And I was just on the internet and a thing came up and it said, it was just a really like positive thing. And it said, um, 
sometimes it's better to do anything than to do nothing. And this was in regard to procrastination. And, and, I, and I thought, yeah. And I went out and had a really good day. And yeah, it didn't, maybe it didn't transform my life. But it transformed that day. And something that happened on that day may have suddenly transformed my life without me even realising it at this point. Sometimes it's the little things. I've been telling women that for years, but I thought I'd leave it with a silly joke. So I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. If you're still asleep, then brilliant. If you're not asleep yet, then you wait till you lay down and go to sleep. And notice what you expect. And notice how things change. Because you'll be remembering some of the things that I've said. Maybe not everything, but something will stick out. And you only need one thing. Remember Kaplunk? Remember the game Kaplunk? With all the little sticks that go through from one side to the other. With this big, like, plastic tube. And there's all these uh, marbles. Is that one Kaplunk? I think it was, yeah. And you pull the things out. See, it takes one, the wrong one you or the right one to take out, and the whole lot goes. Was that Kaplunk, or am I thinking of a different game? And on that note of my television making a big weird noise, I'm going to go. And I'll see you next Friday. I'll speak to you next Friday. Don't worry, I'm not going to knock on your door or anything like that. I will speak to you. Same place. Next week. Bye.